Hey guys, how's it going? Collector Commerce here. Today we have some quick and helpful tips on what Pokemon products to buy and invest in, and also how to find them and where to find them. I'm not talking about just going and buying three times MSRP stuff. You wanna try and get it for a good deal. And finding things at MSRP is the deal these days. And I have a lot of insights today that are earned as a veteran of the trenches, fighting for months against scalpers, flippers, and rippers to try and get my hands on Pokemon products such as these. So let's get into it. The first part of the video is about what to get. There's some very quick heuristics I can give you on what to get. Special sets in Pokemon are ones such as Champion's Path, Hidden Fates, and Shining Fates. These are the most recent special sets. What's special about them is there's no booster boxes of them, and they typically have a limited print, although we are still seeing Hidden Fates reprinted as a sealed investment or something to open, always pick it up. Special sets are good, but what about the other sets? Generally, Elite Trainer boxes of any set are good. In this current market, they didn't used to be. Basically, every Elite Trainer box sells for more than MSRP, so if you actually get it, you're getting a good deal. If you look at the long-term prices, Elite Trainer boxes typically do very well, almost as well as booster boxes. Sometimes you'll see sets that are not as good. The Elite Trainer boxes actually perform better than the booster box, probably because they're collectible sealed pieces themselves. They have their own art. Just having one of each kind of completes the collection. But outside of Elite Trainer boxes and booster boxes, the set really does matter. Uh, you might see blister packs. They're, you know, you'll see them right now for battle styles, sometimes Vivid Voltage stuff like that. Note there are no blister packs for special sets and also note that certain things like these tins are not set specific are not usually the best investment unless you know what's inside them. So in general just knowing what are good sets or that are good to pick up. Keep your eyes open for some videos on what sets are the best to invest in. If you happen to find an old blister pack or something like that, which ones are good to open, which ones are good to keep sealed and might be a better long-term investment. So your quick bullet points for what to buy you have special sets, elite trainer boxes, and you have to kind of learn the third one. That depends on the set. So now we know what to get, but where and how do you get them? Well, that's, that's challenging because as you know, right now getting Pokemon product is chaos. It's like a horror movie, the shelves are bare. First up, we have Walmart. It's one of the big two, Walmarts and Targets. So the way it works at big box stores, typically, is uh, in particular for Walmart. They, Walmart actually rents out the shelf space, and a vendor comes in, and they put up the product on the shelf. And they typically have a schedule, and that's what you want to learn. In the early stages, you either have to find the intel yourself, or you have to get it from like a Discord or a Facebook group. Keep in mind that most of the time it's on a weekly basis for restocks. The way I did it was boots on the ground, going to Walmart to get to the store to check if they have restocked. So what I recommend is going at least once a day. Go there uh, if you have no idea when it restocks and take a picture of where they restock the cards, usually at the front somewhere. If you see football cards, if you see basketball cards, or if you see special sets like Champion's Path, uh, Hidden Fates, or Shining Fates, that means the restock was very recent. So that is a great sign. But sometimes it's cold. That's why it's good to take pictures every time you go and you can compare. A lot of times it will be in the morning and the vendor will restock before open. Uh, I have not had any success calling into Walmart and checking. But if you are in there and you see there was a restock, or even if you didn't, it doesn't hurt to ask the employee when it happened or if they have any knowledge on it. Joining a Discord group or something can I kind of help you keep track with the restocks. That kind of helps you keep in mind what might be coming out that week. Now we're moving on to Target, Walmart's slightly classier big box brother. Target has had some notable news lately that used to function very similarly to Walmart. For example, my area, it would restock usually on Tuesday morning. However, now they still typically restock on Tuesdays, but they have a new policy where everything that is $19.99 or above is actually held and not put on the shelves. You can only buy it on Friday at 8 a.m. What do you think that would lead to? We have some people who sleep outside of Target overnight. Because of this Friday restock, you might have a better chance of getting stuff on Tuesday morning, which is recently where I had some success. At least they're making policies though to help. Target's current policy is a limit of two per item per person. It kind of helps you get, get a little bit better of a chance of actually getting stuff, but realistically, 
you have to get there pretty early. Okay, so now we got GameStop. Some people might think of GameStop as a dying brand or a meme stock, but I think of it as a sleeper for finding Pokemon cards. Their restocks are not necessarily reliable and they often don't get allocated enough product, but where they really shine is for pre-orders, except for the recent pre-order of Chilling Rain that they did online and it sold out in like an hour. They usually do them in a store where you actually have a chance to get it because bots cannot go into a store in person. So when they do that, and I'm hoping they will continue to do that, and this was just a one-off, uh, it gives you a really good chance of getting new sets when they come out. Keep that in mind for the 25th anniversary. I highly recommend that you keep your ear to the ground and you try and pre-order. Another thing is when sets come out, they typically get some extra product, except for you know something like, like Shining Fates. When that happened, GameStop was not allocated enough they couldn't even fulfill pre-orders for weeks but for battle styles I had a lot better luck. I was actually able to go there on the release day and get some products without pre-ordering it too. So that's kind of why I think GameStop is a sleeper. It's not the place you can go to every week reliably and fulfill all your needs, but it is a place that will kind of help you round out your game. And for GameStop, uh, they're great about answering the phones. I think they typically open about noon, so that's a good time to call. Just be nice with them. This is the first store where I find phones to be very helpful. Okay, so now Best Buy. Best Buy. Not the best buy. We're done. I'm just kidding, guys. Um, best buy is actually, uh, you know, at least in my area, I have not seen a restock or heard a restock, at least in store for months. You know, I think the last time I saw a restock was like in December. I don't know. I haven't been in like a month. So that's just my local experience with Best Buy. However, Best Buy Online does have the ability for you to do, you know, in-store pickup, kind of like GameStop, and also shipping to you, kind of like GameStop. Um, they are good. However, they are like bot catnip, and therefore it's tough. It's real tough. Anything that pops up will go out of stock within a few minutes, generally. So if you're getting a notification from like a Discord or Twitter, it might be a little too late on Best Buy. However, if you're watching, you can score some stuff. I know a lot of people do that. Best Buy, not the best for in-person Pokemon card hunting. For online, it's passable. It's, it's a decent option. Barnes & Noble. Is this another dying brick and mortar store? Or is this your Pokemon sleeper? Just like GameStop, it's pretty good. Barnes & Nobles gets pretty good restocks. The first release date of Shiny Face, they had the ETBs and the tins. Uh, they had the premium collection and the like two weeks later when that came out. Uh, they had Battle Styles ETBs recently and they just have a lot of good stuff. Way back in the day, I even found uh, Champion's Path there. So they've, they've been getting good Pokemon product for a long time. I'm not sure if this is nationwide, but my local Barnes and Nobles have been taking the product and actually putting it behind the checkout register desk. And you actually are very rarely gonna find it out on the shelves. You have to go up and ask for it and they all limit you typically to like two items a person, which I think is pretty good. Even with the limit of two items a person, the good stuff will probably sell out pretty quick. Also, just like GameStop, calling Barnes and Nobles is pretty effective. So Barnes and Nobles definitely don't sleep on them. Last of the retail chains we have Party City. Is this the Party City? For Pokemon, no, not so much. It used to be because they would have really weird old products. For example, they used to have Detective Pikachu boxes and old GX stuff and even like Cosmic Eclipse and older packs was pretty good. However, they don't really restock anymore. At least in my local area, they said they haven't gotten shipments for cards for months. You might want to check in your area, but they don't get a high rating as of right now from me. Last but not least, but maybe least? Depends, as in local game stores. That's right. You're thinking like, how could your local game stores have so much variance? It really depends on the management and what they wanna do. Local game stores often get products. However, there's usually not enough product for everybody, specifically of special sets. Shining Fates is a good example, right? The most recent special set. I had pre-ordered it at multiple places. I got allocated down or canceled at almost all of them. On release day for Shining Fates, I got like, I literally got nothing on actual release day. So the good news is they often do pre-orders. However, with how the product shortages have been and the unprecedented demand, as well as the pricing, I see that there's not many doing pre anymore and they typically wait a long time because they want to make sure they get their allocation numbers because they might order like a thousand boxes they might get allocated down and only get 200 and if they sold 400 pre-orders then they you know screwed 
But the real problem with local game stores is that they often will price things based on eBay or something like that. At least half of them in my area tend to do this. Maybe like the Shining Fates ETB will be like 80, 90, 100, even $110 on release day. You know, on release day, that was not unheard of for, you know, secondhand flip prices. Actually getting MSRP from local game stores or local card shops, pretty tough to do. So these are not big chains, they are local. So it really depends on your area. I highly recommend calling them up and ask about their pricing a little bit. So my ultimate tip for local game stores is to get to know your stores different stores mark up differently and it is on a local basis. So today we talked about what to get with the special sets, the lead trainer boxes, and of course products that, you know, depends on the set, certain sets are better than others. We also talked about where and how to get sealed Pokemon product. Walmart and Target are two of your good options and neither are perfect. GameStop and Barnes and Nobles are both very good, but somewhat limited. Best Buy is, you know, my experience only good online. And then of course your local game stores where you would think would be the best place to actually get product is hit or miss depending on your location. So you got to do the research, got to call around, be nice, be friendly, find out. They're not the best surprisingly. And sadly, why would you charge? A hundred, oh, I'm not gonna get into it. <laughs> Hopefully these tips were helpful for you if you're trying to find sealed Pokemon product. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to support the YouTube channel in fighting against the algorithm. Also, yeah, leave a comment on what your experiences are with finding sealed Pokemon product. This is Collector Commerce here, signing off. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. That would be great. Just do it.